So let's kick off the search track at ApacheCon 2021. Thank you, everyone uh, who's here uh, attending uh, the ApacheCon at Home 2021. Um, our first speaker for the search track has been an Apache and Lucene sort of committer since 2012, a very active member of the community. Uh, he's a tech lead on Elasticsearch at Elastic during his day job. Today, he's here to talk about speeding up your Lucene queries by avoiding search. So please welcome Adrian. Thank you, Shroom. Let's start. So I'm going to try hard not to use the entire time for this presentation so that we can have interesting conversations in the end. So let's start. So I move slide first. Can you see that? Can you see the new slide? Yes, I'm going to assume yes. So I can skip the slide actually because Anshum already gave a great introduction for me. So let's start. So first, why do we build indexes and in particular loosen indexes? Obviously, we build indexes because we want to make search fast. But search is still slower than instant in many cases. And that's what we're going to discuss today. So Lucene's indexes allow for running many types of queries. You probably know about term queries, disjunctive, conjunctive, phrase, and range queries, all of which are exposed in Lucene's classic query parser, and you're probably familiar with them. Lucene also allows computing facets, top terms, range facets, and everything that, that's described here is what I would call like basic usage of Lucene, but also the most common usage of Lucene. And we are going to look into a few tips and tricks, how to make this sort of queries return results almost in instantaneous, no matter what the size of your data set is. So like I was saying, search is making, is giving answers faster than you would get with a linear search, but it's still CPU intensive. And in particular, we are familiar with a couple scenarios in which uh, your search request could run very slowly. There, there are two worst case scenarios that I'm mentioning here. One is with conjunctions. When you have two high cardinality clauses, meaning that they match many documents that have few common docs, finding those common docs is a slow process because there's a lot of documents that have no chance of matching that we still need to evaluate. There's a similar issue with phrase queries. If you're looking for uh, two words occurring in adjust, at adjacent positions, and these words happen to occur in many documents together, but never at consecutive positions, then that's going to be an even slower query. And we're going to, look, what one tip is going to be about avoiding that worst case scenario. And one thing that, uh, one piece of context that good to have is that some queries have worst case scenarios, like conjunctions and phrase queries, but there are queries that are fast all the time. So these are the queries that we like. And those two queries are the natural docs query, a special query that matches all documents within an index, and the term query, which is a query that matches documents for a single term. And how cheap are these queries? So that screenshot that I took yesterday from the Lucene's nightly benchmark that Mike McCandless has been maintaining uh, in his spare time for more than 10 years now, it's a wonderful resource. There's a link at the top of the slide. I would encourage you to have a look uh, if you're curious. And if you look at the queries per second that Lucian achieves on this data set, which is a, a dump of Wikipedia, uh, some common queries like, like conjunctions, disjunctions, or phrases reach queries per second per core in the order of 10 to 50, while with term queries, Lucene is able to reach 1,500 queries per second per core. So that, that's much faster. And so you, you can probably see where I'm going here. Whenever you can replace a conjunction, a disjunction, or a phrase with a term query, you're going to get much, much, much faster uh, search results. Um, here's um, a use case I'm going to use throughout this presentation to give some uh, example use cases for the optimizations I'm going to talk about. And so I'm going to assume that you have an e-commerce catalog that you want to provide search access to. Uh, it's a simplified example. Products have, say, a de designation, what is the product about, a category, a brand, and a price. And all these fields are indexed with what would be, I'd say, like the default way to index these fields, given what Lucene offers. 
So the designation would be indexed with a text field, meaning that it supports full text search. Category is indexed with string field and sorted dog values field. So you can do exact search plus uh, faceting, likewise for brand, and price is an endpoint plus a numeric dog values field. So you can do things like sorting by price, filtering by price range, or computing, computing facets by price ranges as well. And as a start, like the first approach that we are start, starting from is everything indexed into a single listening index. And so how can we make things better? So tip number one. One optimization you could look into consists of making our heavy filters parse as match all docs query. So what does it mean in practice? Let's say that you have a user who's searching for TVs in the electronics category. So the loosening query is going to look like TV as a must close and category colon electronics as a, a filter close. And that's, that query is a conjunction. And conjunctions run fast, but like we saw before, we have queries that run even faster, which are term queries. So is there a way that we can make that query magically pass as a term query? And as a matter of fact, there's one way to make it happen, which would consist of moving the electronic category to its own index, meaning that instead of having a single listening index that contains everything, you're going to have one listening index that contains all products from the electronics category and one other listening index that contains products for all other categories. And uh, once you've done that, when, once you've split your index, then you can uh, parse your queries differently because the filter on category electronics on the index that only contains electro the electronics category, it could be parsed as a natural docs query. And on the other index, it could pass as a match no docs query. And what does it help? We still have conjunctions except that in the first case, when there's a filter on a natural docs query, Lucene is going to rewrite that query as a term query on TV. And so we are back to having a single term query that we've seen before is much faster than running a, con a conjunction. And in the second case, there's a filter on a match no docs query. So likewise, through the rewrite process, Lucene is going to very easily identify that this query has no chance of matching a single document in your index. I gave an example with the electronics category, but obviously you'd like to do this uh, with multiple filters, most likely multiple categories. So which ones should be migrated to their own index? There are two factors that you need to take into account. One is how many documents does this query match? And the second one is how frequently is this category used for filtering? And the reason why it's important is that categories that have the highest number of products, if you move them to their own index, that's going to especially help with tail, tail latencies because you're going to make your slowest queries faster because high cardinality filters are more expensive than low cardinality filters. On the other hand, if you try to move frequently used, frequently filtered categories first, then you're going to optimize for average latencies. And most likely you're going to look into a combination of those two factors in order to make a decision on which categories should be migrated to their own index. And that, that, that example that I gave consists of moving a very simple filter, a term query, uh, to, to its own index. But that also works with more complex filters. Like it, it, it would be possible as well to move all documents that are from the electronics category and from the Apple brand to their own index if you identified that that was a frequently used filter, for instance. And, and then you're also going to speed up queries when they're filtered by brand. So, there's no there's no end to, to that optimization tip. You can use it with whatever filters you want. One thing you need to be careful with is that you should be careful not to extract too many filters to their own index because obviously you don't want to end up searching thousands or tens of thousands of loose indices. That's going to introduce new inefficiencies. So that advice should be used with care. And one thing I wanted to mention as well is that Elasticsearch helps uh, automate this, talk, this sort of optimization with a new field type that was introduced uh, something like one year ago that we call a constant keyword field that helps automate this rewriting process of a filter into a match docs query or a match no doc query, depending on whether the index you're on matches 
uh, all documents, whether the filter matches all documents on the known of the documents of your index. So that was tip number one. Let's move forward with tip number two. Short circuit faceting requests to use index, index stats whenever possible. So that one is not about optimizing uh, the request for top hits, it's about optimizing your faceting request. And there's one case when faceting requests, in particular term facets, are very cheap to compute. It's when your query writes to a natural doc query and your index has no deletions. Because when that happens, then your top terms are very easy to compute because they're already pre-computed in your inverted index. And that's because the terms dictionary already includes the document count for every term in your index. So that doesn't feel very applicable at the start, right? Because that only works when you're calling the natural docs query. Except that if you apply the previous advice and you also extract your most commonly used filters to their own index, uh, then you're going to end up with a natural docs query whenever users start browsing your catalog. Uh, by using the most common filters. And so whenever they do that, they are go you're going to be able to return term facets for any field like the brand field in constant time by, by just iterating the terms that exist in your term, terms dictionary. Um, there's maybe one example that's worth mentioning when that often happens with Elasticsearch. So as you may know, Elasticsearch is often used for time-based data. And so we are applying a slightly different variant of the previous tip for time-based filters, which and it works this way. Like, instead of creating a single index that contains all events, we create time-partitioned indices, and for instance, daily indices. And this has a great benefit that if you filter by, say, all the data from last week, then you're going to have two indices, the two indices at the extremes that are going to partially match, but all the indices in between. Uh, indices from day two, two, three, four, five, they are going to entirely match. And so the range filter on the timestamp on those indices can be rewritten to a natural log query. And again, that very useful because that means that on all these indices, uh, term facets can be computed uh, instantly. So that's something that actually uh, applicable in the real world in, in some cases. And I mentioned the case of term facets but I'm hopeful that that's something we are going to be able to do with range facets in the future too. And there are two Lucene uh, issues that we are tracking for that purpose. The first one got addressed something like last week or the week before, and it's about adding a way for queries to optimize the way that they can count the number of matches per segment. That's a new weight uh, count API. And there's a separate discussion about changing the API we used we use for points, so which is the way that we index numeric fields, so that we could implement weight count uh, on points to um, count the number of matching documents for a range in constant time when there are no deletions. And when we do that, we are going to be able to apply the same optimization I just mentioned for term facets, for range facets as well, meaning that for the e-commerce example I've been using, you would be able to return in constant time for your electronics category, how many products you have for prices between 0 and 10, 10 and 100, and so forth. So that, that's something that's also going to be applicable in real world examples in the near future, near future that I'm eager for using to, to implement. A new tip, tip number three, use index sorting to speed up conjunctions. Um, so index sorting is a very powerful tool in the Lucene toolbox and maybe one of like the most beneficial, th that's one of these features that are very beneficial and that are likely not used enough by our users. And today I'm going to explain how index sorting can be used to speed up conjunctions. If you remember the introduction I gave to this presentation, I explained that conjunctions can sometimes be very CPU intensive when you're computing the conjunction between two very high cardinality clauses that have very few common documents. And so in that case, I'm giving an example. Like you're searching for all documents that match TV in the designation, 
and Toyota in the brand. And th these two clauses, they both match a lot of documents because you have a lot of TVs in your uh, catalog and maybe lots of uh, car parts. But unfortunately, there's no, there is no single product that matches TV in the designation field and Toyota in the brand. But that's not something that's easy for Lucene to identify because those uh, two terms, like I said, they have a very high cardinality. And so the algorithm that Lucene uses in order to compute the conjunction between two queries is like for every, whenever it's evaluating a document on one clause, it's going to go ask for the other clause. Okay, what's the least document that you have that is greater than or equal to this document ID? And, and so forth until it finds a match. So in that case, we start with document one on designation TV. And we asked the Toyota uh, term, well, what's your, doc ID, what's your least doc ID that's greater than or equal to one? And if, we've, if we had found one, then we'd have a match. But unfortunately, we don't. And the next document is two. So we need to go back to TV in the designation field and ask, what's your least document that's greater than or equal to two and it's five? And so we don't have a match yet either and so forth and so forth. And we do that about 10 times to finally, finally realize that you have not a single common match between those two clauses. And that, that still took time. Like every time you need to ask for a posting list, what's your list document that's greater than or equal to a given doc ID? That's a wasted, that's wasted CPU cycle. And in, in that example, we are jumping about 10 times because there are about 10 doc IDs per posting list. But you can very easily imagine if you had a catalog with millions of entries and posting lists of like hundreds of thousands of decades, how the number of jumps that you need to do in order to identify the common matches between the two posting lists would also grow linearly to a very high number that would make that query slow to evaluate. And there's one way that you can avoid that work case scenario, which is by using index sorting. So in the second example, I'm using an index that is sorted by brand. And a natural consequence of sorting by brand is that all documents that have Toyota as a brand are going to have adjacent doc IDs. So in that case, the Toyota brand gets associated with doc IDs between six and 13. And because there is no common doc between TV and Toyota, this means that there's no doc matching doc ID for designation TV in the six to 13 range. And so when, when conjunctions are going to try to compute the intersection between those posting lists. First, we, we still start with the designation TV and find the doc ID of one. Then we ask Toyota, what's the list doc ID that's greater than one that you have in six? Okay, no match. Then in, in designation TV, what's the list doc ID greater than six, 14? And by only doing three jumps uh, across those two posting lists, we already realize that there is no single common match between those two posting lists. And what's very powerful is that, again, in, the, in that example, you only had two doc IDs, but that would still be applicable if you had a posting list of millions of entries. Like even if you had 1 million matches for designation TV and 1 million matches for brand Toyota, it would still only require three jumps to identify that there's no common jump. And so that calling so those jumps, they're called advent in the scene. And calling that only three times really returns very quickly. So you would know within a millisecond that you have no common matches between those two clauses. And I, I get this example with two clauses that have no common documents because that's probably the easiest way to understand why index sorting is helping. But it turns out that index sorting is also helping in the case when you have many common documents between your clauses because it boils down to evaluating your, like say we are still taking this example of sorting by brand Toyota. If we had common matches between designation, designation TV and brand Toyota, finding the intersection between those two posting lists would consist of evaluating designation TV on a given range of doc IDs. And it turns out that that's, that boils down to evaluating a term query on a subset, a sub range of the doc ID space. And while it's not exactly as fast as a term query, it gives you very similar performance to what you get with the term query. So again, we'd be back to performance that's one order of magnitude faster than what you'd have if you didn't sort your index by brand. It's probably worth mentioning, I gave this example by sorting by brand, 
which is a, a keyword field, but you would get exactly the same benefits for range queries if you had your index sorted by price. And, and finally, you can also make it work, work with multiple fields by sorting by all fields in sequence, assuming that these fields are locality. Like for instance, it, it would probably make sense on that index to first sort by brand and then by price. Ideally, you, you'd put the local identity field first, which is going to help with the performance of, of fields that are a bit further from the start. Uh, like say you would sort by brand and categories and maybe something else. The performance benefit is higher for the fields that are closer to the beginning of the sort specification. And yep, that's it about index sorting. Uh, very po powerful tool in the listening toolbox, probably one of the uh, Lucent feature that would gain to being known much, to being known more. And the last tip I'm going to talk about in this presentation is using shingles for phrase queries. So first I need to explain how phrase queries get evaluated. Phrase queries get evaluated in two, in two stages. The first stage consists of using the conjunction of the terms as an approximation for the phrase query. If you are looking for all the documents that contain the phrase Apache Lucene, then that's only possible uh, for documents that contain that phrase if it also contains Apache and Lucene. And Apache and Lucene is a much cheaper query, so we use it as an approximation. And that's useful when you do filtering because we can evaluate the conjunction with your other filters before we can move forward with more uh, expensive checks on positions. And by the way, this is the second stage of the phrase query, which is about checking positions to verify matches. So whenever we find two documents that contain both Apache and Lucene, we, we are going to iterate their positions, meaning the positions at which those terms occur, and see whether we can find two consecutive positions at which we can find these terms. And phrase queries are bad because they have two worst case scenarios. First, they use conjunctions as an approximation. So they have the exact same uh, worst case scenario that conjunctions have. Like when you have two terms that have very high cardinalities, but they never occur in the same document. And you have another worst case scenario, which is this time specific to phrase queries, which is that they get slow whenever you have documents that many documents that contains the terms you're looking for, but never at consecutive positions. Because on all these documents, you're going to iterate positions. And iterating positions um, is it, it, not slow, but if you need to do it across millions of documents, that makes a slow query. So what can we do about that? Th that's one way that you can uh, solve two problems with one solution, which is by indexing um, shingles for your fields. So what, what, what do I mean by shingles? Shing Lucene has a shingle filter that allows you to index consecutive terms together. Like if you were indexing Apache Lucene is a search engine in Lucene, you would index first phrase Apache Lucene, then Lucene is, is a, a search search engine. And every time those two consecutive terms uh, would be indexed as a single term to Apache Lucene. And that's a secondary index that you could use to run phrase queries. And that's something that we automate in less success with, with uh, the index phrases option of the text field, but that you can also use with uh, row scene in order to speed up your phrase queries. I, I want to warn you that there's one downside of this approach, which is that it makes your indexes much, uh, much more, uh, much larger, because those shingle indexes are going to take a lot of space because they are going to be many unique terms, but at the same time, they're also going to give you much better search performance whenever you can run your phrase queries via term query instead. And something that's worth mentioning as well is that even in the case that you were to run a phrase query on more than two terms, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Apache Lucene query, for instance, if you were to run this as a phrase, you, would be search you could be searching on the conjunction between Apache Lucene and Lucene query. And most likely these two shingles are going to have a much lower term document frequency, so number of matches, compared to Apache, Lucene, or Query uh, taken on their own. And so that conjunction is going to run much faster than the conjunction that, that's used for approximation that would be Apache and Lucene and Query 
that you would run on your primary index that indexes uh, terms as is instead of shingles. Um, so that's about everything I, I had to, to tell you. We still have some time for a question, and I'd be very happy to have a conversation about what we just discussed. So let me know. Any questions? Thank you, Adrian. Um, we have we have one question here. Um, it's a, from Artem. It says, if you split your indices into two categories, wouldn't be the scoring affected if you search among these two indices at the same time? Just IDF distribution, I guess, is what they're concerned about. Yes, uh, th 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 that is correct. So you, you need a bit more plumbing if you want to preserve the same scoring you had before. And Lucene has a way to enable you to override the global term statistics. And by, by the way, that's a feature that's exposed, I believe, in Apache Solar and, and Elasticsearch, for instance. So that's easy to use. You can just tell uh, Apache Solar or Elasticsearch, for instance, that you're searching across multiple uh, collections. I think it's called Apache Solar and tell it that you'd like to use the global term statistics. And, and Sora is going to uh, automate the work of fetching term statistics on all indices to compute global term statistics, and then doing a second phase, a second phase on your indices with those uh, global term statistics in order to compute the exact same scores that you would get if you were querying a single index. So, um, there's a second question that seems to be an elastic source thing. It says related to index sorting, there's a link to index module index sorting. Uh, and the question is, is that the documentation part of Elasticsearch explaining that point? I that's don't know correct. if you want it. That's correct. Okay. Um, then we have a question from Mike. Uh, no deletion seems like a very hard constraint for reading the term frequencies when you're updating documents. Uh, what are your recommendations here? Yeah, so I, I've been making very uh, simplifying assumptions for this presentation, otherwise it wouldn't have been possible. So one of them is that, indeed, it, 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 it's not easy to not have deletions in an index. Another simplification I made is that, in, in the example I gave, there's a single depth of categories, while it's, while it's common to have hierarchical categories in practice, which makes this a bit harder to apply in practice. So that, 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 that's a good point. It's not that common uh, to have no deletions in, in practice. One, I mean, it's still worth looking to, sometimes you might be able to avoid uh, having deletions. Like say, for instance, you only have one or two fields that you need to update. Maybe it's worth considering indexing these fields with updatable doc values so that you wouldn't actually have deletions in your index, but instead you would have doc value updates. That would keep the other, that would keep this optimization that requires all documents to be live in your index. To It would still be applicable if you were able to do something like that. Uh, then we have a question from Alex. How does the indexing process need to change in order to leverage index sorting? So Lucene has special paths in its indexing process to handle index sorting. So there are two, two things that change. The first one is that at flush, flush time, meaning when writing a segment to disk, Lucene is going to shuffle the doc ID order to make sure that uh, doc IDs are in field order. So that's the first thing that changes. And the second thing that changes is at, at merge time. By default, when you don't have index sorting enabled, Lucene is going to merge like data for segment one, then data for segment two, then data for segment three, and so forth. When you have index sorting enabled, it's going to do a similar thing as merge sort does by merging the two segments in parallel to make sure it preserves the order uh, in, the new, in the newly merged segment. Uh, one good news is that index sorting used to have a pretty pretty high indexing overhead when it was first introduced to Lucene. And through the releases, we've made that index time overhead much, much, much lower to the point that it's probably more in the order of something like 20% in worst case scenarios these days, which makes it still uh, largely applicable to a very high number of applications based on Lucene. OK. Uh... Next question is, is it helpful to use index phrases for phrase queries that include a high slop? For example, slop of more than two. 
So no, it, it only works when the slope is equal to zero. Uh, th that uh, phrase optimization that, that I mentioned doesn't work when you when you allow for slopes between the terms you're looking for. Okay, and then we have a question from Mike. Uh, should we consider mining our queries for commonly occurring shingles and conjunctions and indexing those only to get the benefits of shingling optimization at limited cost? Absolutely, that that would be the ideal situation. Um, another uh, thing that might help, like for the phrase optimization, would be to only apply it for shingles that contain stop words. I think Lucien has a filter to that that's called common common grams. No, sorry, I, I don't remember the name of the filter, but there's one filter that allows doing it. Meaning that if you're indexing Apache Lucene is a search engine with that filter, it will index Apache, Lucene, Lucene is, is a, a search, search and engine. And that way you'd still have a way to optimize phrase queries on what are the most expensive phrase queries, meaning phrase queries that uh, contain uh, stop words. That, that's another optimization into that optimization that you could be explored. We have a question from Alexi um, regarding the speed of conjunction of two high cardinality filter clauses. Are there cases where using talk values lookup for one of the filters speed up the conjunction operation other than points numerics? Uh, absolutely, and I think that it's something that we have in Lucene since Lucene 7, one of the late 7x Lucene releases. We have that, I was going to say new, but I think it's many years old now <laughs> already. Uh, index or dog values query, which is a query wrapper that, that, that exists in Lucene that tries to pick points or dog values depending on which one it thinks is going to be the most efficient. In the way that this optimization works uh, in practice is that if the query is likely to lead iteration, then we're going to use points because we'll need to iterate to evaluate most of the document that the range matches anyway. But on the other hand, if you already have a very um, low cardinality clause that, that you can use to drive the iteration, maybe it's better to use dog values uh, to check the documents of that other clause instead of evaluating all the matches for the range using points. So that, that's definitely a worthwhile optimization and there's already tooling in losing for it. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, we have more. Uh, in a lot of queries on large index indexes, uh, faceting is a major bottleneck for performance. Any tips or tricks on improving faceting performance? Um, Indeed, faceting tends to be slower. So one, one issue with faceting is that you often need to evaluate all the matches of your query. While if you're only looking for the top hits, since losing eight, zero and eight, when sorting by score and eight, dot something when sorting by field, losing now has ways to, to avoid evaluating all the matches of a query in order to figure out the top ones. So usually getting the top matches for a query is going to be faster than computing facets. Um, I don't have great recommendations. Maybe one would be, one is that there's one way to improve the user experience, which consists of splitting it into two separate requests. So that in the UI, you can start loading the top hits while your facets are still computing, and then you can load them uh, lazily in the background once you get the, the information. That, that's the trick that can help improve the user experience. Uh, but, but it doesn't make the faceting fast request per se uh, faster. It's just a UI trick, a UX trick. So Mike, I think, has a suggestion. Uh, it says, how about approximating facet counts by sampling? Uh, th th that, that's a good question. I, if Mike has ideas how to do <laughs> something right to get good approximate, uh, facet counts, I, I'd be very interested. Uh, in general, it feels hard to me to select uh, like a subset of your doc ID space that's still representative of your entire doc ID space. But may maybe maybe there are tricks using index sorting or other doc ID, other approaches that uh, reorder doc IDs 
that makes this sort of approach better. I, I, I'm thinking of that. I, I don't have concrete ideas, but that, that, that definitely sounds in, interesting. And if Mike has ideas, uh, I'd be very interested in discussing that sort of stuff. That, that's indeed exciting, even how fast sets tend to be a bottleneck for such applications. So we also have some things where it says you can also ignore deletions and non-document uh, non-document hits and just scale the facet counts from term dictionary. Yes, so I, it probably works in certain cases, but that assumes that the documents that match your filter have about the same distribution as the entire set of documents you have in your index, which I am sure is not always true. So I'm sure it can work in, in certain cases, but probably not all. Yeah, 